It costs more to be poor. Yeah, you heard me right. Poor people often end up spending more for basic things and services that the rich and even the average Joe get for less or for free. You wonder how? Being poor often forces you into making poor decisions that seem like the only solution to your immediate problems, but they tend to create more trouble down the road and make you lose more money, adding to your already heavy load of woes. Obviously, only a few of us truly understand the harsh reality of poverty. It's time we open our eyes and take a closer look. Stick with me to the end, and I'll show you how and why being poor is more expensive. Let me break down some other ways the poor man loses money. Financial Services It's hard to navigate modern life without basic financial services like ATMs, checking accounts, and personal checks. But the less money you have, the more you end up paying for these services that the well-off get almost for free. Banks make their profits by earning interest on your money. So if your account balance hovers around the poverty line, usually under $1,500, they no longer see you as a profitable customer, and they start making you pay for basic services through monthly fees. And heaven help you if your balance goes below zero. Each overdraft can slap you with a charge of around $35. If a bank decides to extend credit to you, the terms will be far less favorable compared to someone with a healthier financial history. You'll pay more interest every month and any late payments will mean even more penalties and fees. Frustrated by these banking rules and problems, some may decide to ditch banks altogether, but that doesn't solve their problems. In fact, it often adds to them. Even cash becomes expensive when you don't have much of it. If you withdraw $200 from an out-of-network ATM, that $3 fee is going to be the service charge. But if you can only afford to withdraw $20 at a time, you're essentially paying a whopping 30% fee just to access your own money. Cashing a paycheck without an account costs money, and buying money orders and paying bills incur more costs. It becomes a vicious cycle. Either deal with late payment charges or pay extra for delivery services to pay bills with cash, costing even more in the long run. If you believe managing a credit card is difficult, consider yourself fortunate that you don't have to rely on payday loans. These types of businesses tend to prey on individuals who do not possess credit cards, subjecting them to exorbitant interest rates that can reach an astonishing 800% annually. Yet countless people are compelled to endure this financial nightmare. How about housing costs? Renting a place to live is a whole different challenge for people with lower incomes. From 2010 to 2017, only 36% of families making under $30,000 a year in the U.S., managed to own a home. The other 64% had to rent, or worse, face homelessness. Renting isn't a walk in the park, especially given the state of the housing market. Landlords often demand a security deposit ranging from $500 to $1,000, along with one or two months' rent to move in. For folks just scraping by, these sums are practically impossible to come up with. And if your credit score is low, you may end up paying even more. In such cases, the only option other than homelessness, might be a low-cost extended-stay hotel, which doesn't usually require a deposit. But here's the problem. It costs way more than an apartment in the long run, and it often lacks amenities like kitchen appliances and laundry facilities that save apartment dwellers time and money. Another way the poor man can lose money is through food and grocery expenses. The story doesn't end with financial services and housing. It's more expensive for low-income families to put food on the table and buy basic household necessities. Not only do they spend a higher percentage of their income on these essentials, but they also face higher prices. Buying in bulk at a supermarket is a budget-friendly option for families who can afford it. But what do you do when you can't afford to stock up in that way? Even if you manage to scrape together enough money, these big supermarkets often aren't conveniently located in low-income neighborhoods. So, you're faced with the challenge of getting there without a car. People in these so-called food deserts often lack the means to travel around town, hunting for bargains. Instead, they're left with local convenience and corner stores, where prices are significantly higher, or buy in lower quantities, which is often more expensive. Or they resort to fast food, which might seem cheaper but ends up costing more than cooking at home and takes a toll on their health. Next, Taxes. 
It's a common belief that the wealthy shoulder a significant portion of federal income taxes. But taxes don't stop at the federal level. When you factor in state and local taxes, sales taxes, and other levies, the tax burden falls excessively on the poor. There was a study that shows that in 10 U.S. states, low-income individuals spend six times more of their income on taxes than the wealthy. It's a financial disaster. The poor also spend more on health care. Imagine having to make some tough decisions about where to spend your last dollar. Should you pay the water bill, buy dinner, pay rent, or visit the hospital? Of course, you'll leave out the doctor's visit because you think those symptoms aren't that serious until it completely deteriorates and you're compelled to spend more, whereas it could be prevented with a medical visit. But that's not all. Poverty isn't just financially unhealthy, it's physically unhealthy, too. Due to a lack of money, many can't access better health care options that would provide the medical attention needed to cope with life's challenges. Some people become so mentally drained that they suffer from fatigue, heart attacks, or even contemplate suicide. That's the extent of the toll poverty takes on both the body and the mind. Often, they have to go without food for extended periods, leading to numerous medical complications. And without adequate health insurance or an emergency fund, they can't afford to care for their health. If the breadwinner's health deteriorates, the entire family suffers. The rich can't access top-notch health care, schedule appointments with the best doctors in town, get comprehensive regular checkups, buy the most expensive medications, and undergo any necessary surgeries. But the poor don't have these luxuries. Many lose their lives simply because they can't afford to treat themselves. Next is on transportation. Transportation is something most of us can't escape in our daily lives. Whether getting to work, shuttling the kids to school, or picking up groceries, transportation is a must. Unfortunately, in many parts of the U.S., public transportation is limited. And where it does exist, it's often far from budget-friendly. So if you can't afford a car and live in an area without accessible public transportation, you might rely on taxis or Uber rides. That can quickly send your transportation costs through the roof. Some might think owning a car would make life easier, but hold your horses. Even with a tight budget, owning a car, any car, can be a significant financial burden. If you have a lower credit score, you'll end up paying higher interest on car loans. And if you're managing to make it, you won't be able to afford a shiny new car. You'll likely end up with an old second-hand vehicle. There is no warranty, and if the car needs frequent repairs, you could spend a small fortune to keep it running. And let's not forget about gas and insurance. Insurance can be a real wallet squeezer for those on a tight budget. Lower-income drivers often face a 59% higher insurance rate than their higher-income counterparts, even with similar safety records. It's just another added cost for those already crushed under the weight of low income. Lastly, inflation affects the poor more than the rich. And just when you thought it couldn't get any tougher, here comes inflation. It's like a relentless enemy, driving up the prices of essentials like food, transportation, rent, gas, and health care. For someone with a low income, this means watching their cost of living shoot through the roof. The lower your income, the harder this price surge hits you eating up a bigger chunk of your hard-earned money. Year after year, a poor person watches as their meager income gets swallowed up by these rising expenses, something a wealthier person might not even notice. It's like a financial tug-of-war, where the odds are heavily stacked against those with less. So the next time you describe your financial situation as broke, remember that even having a little slack is infinitely better than having nothing at all. If you're one of the lucky ones with that bit of slack, be thankful and make the most of it. Nobody aspires to be poor, especially when you understand the costs, both in dollars and in well-being. So, when you encounter someone who's fallen on hard times, remember that with the high cost of being poor, they're literally paying for it daily. Be sympathetic and understanding. Hope you enjoyed today's video. See you soon on Investor Broadcast.